and do the first maze. That one might be too... Well, is it easy? I can't tell. I mean, it says it's easy, but it looks complicated. Well, maybe we should start easy regardless. But you did this one just looking at it, right? You were like, I figured it out. You already did this. Did in I? In your head. I, you, yeah, you, I don't you, know that I can do it again. It. Well, let's do this one. Don't start, start studying. I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just want to look at... Let's get to the photocopy. That's a copy of a maze. Should we put on some classical music and do a maze? Just something contemplative and uh, high-minded, since we are sharpening our minds. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. That's perfect maze music. Right? Yeah. <laughs> nice soft piano. <laughs> We're doing this in pen? We have another one. This pen I brought over is broken now. I broke it somehow. Doing it and undoing it too much. Or should we use pencils? Real men use pens, right? Yeah, like I do the crossword in pen. Yeah. Welcome Keep to <laughs> welcome to keeping your mind sharp with Jeff and Ryan. Today's maze looks like a screensaver from the late '90s. Yeah, this is. Uh, 3D pipes this is building themselves. This is from page four of the Ultimate Maze book. This is a 3D maze. And it's a, it's a basic start to end scenario. Yep. Uh, let's begin. Let's begin. Okay. Going well mm. so far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How's your, how's your pathway going? Mm, it's hard to say. Well, I haven't hit a dead end yet. Look at me. How sharp does your mind feel right now? Mm. It felt sharper a minute ago. Done. Holy shit. I'm lost. Oh my god. We're gonna have to check each other's work. I just went in a big circle. <laughs> Did I just... Perfect maze rooted. Uh, Ryan's... Starting over. Yeah. Starting all the way back from the beginning. Looks like he made a wrong turn all the way back in Albuquerque. Well, you know, it's funny, because I went on a long path that brought me all the way back to the beginning, and then I took a different path and ended up back on that same path. Huh. Yep, oh. dead end. Oh, shit. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna retrace your steps. I'm gonna back. Guys, if you could see the kind of thing he's doing right now, it's just as compelling as listening to it. West. Oh. Oh. Oh, he's got it. it. He's got oh, it. Okay. Oh, okay. That was not so hard. Yeah. That's a fun little trail through, through there. <laughs> let's uh, give, you, give each other... Check my work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, check my work. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this line seems to be going in the right direction. Yeah, this is the way- yeah, okay, this is the way I went to. Yep, that's the way through it. Yep. Yep. We did it! Maze one solved. Maze one solved. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy game. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, it's episode two, season two, episode two. It's still happening. It's still happening. I love you're saying that now. What are you going to be saying around episode 8 or 9 or 10 of this season? It's more... It's, it's still, still happening? It's more like the realization of how much happening there is left to happen. Yeah. Whereas in yeah. season 1, I had this very clear, like, we're going to get through these 6 and then we'll have it done. Right, right. And then it pretty much immediately was like... Let's, and there's more. And now there's more. Well, we're now like like the season is coalescing in a way where I'm starting to get a sense of how much there is, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of show. 
Yeah. There's no shortage of show. Well, as we're going to reveal in this episode, this game has many characters with many <laughs> plot lines. Yep. Well, not many plot. Well, they all have different sort of. There's a lot there's of There's a dialogue. lot of plot. There's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot. Of, they talk to each other and they say how they're feeling about things. <laughs> yeah. Which is a thing that was almost entirely absent from the first game. So that takes up a lot of space. It was an epic journey of playing this game. Like, so many things happened. This is really still, like, the very beginning. I would have thought that episode one would have taken us much deeper into the game. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Welcome to our nearly real-time replay of yeah. Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> <laughs> this season is interesting because it's like two days spread out over a span of months that you're going to be listening to it. Unless you're listening to it after it's all been released. Which... I mean, the ideal way to listen to this would be with a family-sized bag of puffy Cheetos <laughs> and a tub of French onion dip in the dark Whoa. all the way through in one sitting. Do you dip it? Do you dip the Cheeto cheese puffs what in I'm the yeah, here? Yeah, or you pretty, just put? I figured we'll have I right and left yeah, hand yeah, Cheetos right. in one hand, dip in two the fingers other. French <laughs> onion dip, coat your mouth in the French onion dip, then put the Cheeto inside. That's a pretty genius. Like move. making you know what <laughs> a pastry inside of your mouth. Speaking of pastries inside of your mouth, you just made a mistake at breakfast. Yeah. Do you want to tell the audience about this? Ryan came over this morning, and <laughs> I don't know how, it turned like, out that he had already eaten breakfast, and uh, he had gone to the place that I wanted to go for breakfast, so we went back there, and instead of just getting coffee, which was your plan... Well, I've, from the beginning, I was like, we'll go somewhere, and I'll get a scone, or uh -huh, whatever, uh -huh. and they had chocolate eclairs, and yeah. I got one, and it was delicious, but big and very dense. It was really big. And I think you're all going to be shocked to hear this, but I ate a thing, and then I immediately felt sick and regretted it afterwards. Well, when you sat down at the table, you put it down, and you said, I don't need to eat this, and then proceeded to thoroughly enjoy it and instantly regret it. Yeah, that's about the, that's about <laughs> that's, it. That's the story. I ate it. And uh, I could feel my stomach getting cold from the cream and the eclair, and I knew... <laughs> that we should get to work? Well, it, it was happening in a way where I was like, wow, something's coming on. <laughs> well, you looked at me and you were like, I feel like I just ate a bomb. Yeah. Down the road, maybe I'll have diabetes. We can only hope. God damn it. What are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a metaphor for something. I think where we were left off was that we... Were, we Washed up ashore, or did we wash up ashore? No, we haven't washed up ashore we yet. That's no, not that's... for many, many episodes. <laughs> I'm all over the place. We're now going on an adventure with a little girl. Yeah, her mom's dead. We went into the village, the town Mist. of Mist. We unleashed right. the bomb box. Right, and then the little girl was like, "I don't want to go with you," and she made the quake thing happen. And I don't know. And now, now we're not. We're in going the with her. Yeah, and we're taking her to the next village so that she can like heal up. And then she's just going to come with us because we're friends now. And the first enemy that we ran into was called the Sandman. The Sandman. John Sandman. John Sandman. I don't know who that is or what that is, but that's a hilarious name. I, I love doing that with any time there's like a... Uh, I mean, it really goes back to... I think it's in Friends. There's a joke about, like... His name isn't, like... Bill Spiderman. <laughs> and like so, like, Spider Man? Yeah, and he's like talking, it's like, because I think like Phoebe thinks it's Spiderman, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's his last name, and Chandler's like, what? It, what? It's Spider Man. Superman and Sons. <laughs> I just got the first like true feeling of like, we're playing a Final Fantasy game. It's just beginning. <laughs> it's just it's, starting. We are in for a long journey. I think this one might be about the same length as the one we just played. I don't know, though. I'm not yeah. even gonna... I know you've, you've said, said that. You've said that you looked it up. <laughs> yeah, you're not even gonna set an estimate yeah. for us to not know later. So we pick up the girl after she earthquakes the town, walk into this big desert, and the first thing that we find in the northern part of the desert is a cave. And inside this cave is an old man who's basically saying, you can't come through here. Go back to this town. Yeah. Old man, what are you? Beyond here is a nest of monsters. 
too dangerous for you fledglings. An old man we will later learn is Master Tella. At this point, he's just a roadblock. So using our, like, maze instincts from the last game, yep. we should have found the town first. The town is, like, in the way right. of the cave. We somehow made but it we around the town. followed the wall instead of walking to the town. <laughs> we did we the fireman's follow, technique. We did the fireman's technique, hugged yep. the wall, <laughs> and made it to the cave. And then we're told to turn around, go back to the town. Go, go back, back to, to Kaipo. Kaipo. Okay. So we go back to Kaipo, and we wind up talking to that little girl. You okay? I haven't heard your name yet. I know I have done an awful thing and murdered your mom. I can't ask for your forgiveness. But at least let me protect you, please. I'm just going to sleep next to you. So we go to sleep, and in the middle of the night, the cops show up. Well, the, yeah, the Red Wings. Yeah, crystal knocked, you know what I mean? Because of the crystals. And the fascism. Oh no, fuck these guys. Finally found you, Cecil. Oh no, wait. His majesty decided that the colors of mist are too dangerous to be left alive. So this is the same group of people who were like, I don't know, I don't feel good about taking crystals. Right. Gave us a guilt trip and got us exiled or whatever, demoted. I guess they're over questioning authority. To murder a little girl? Hand her over. No! Anyway, they say some bullshit about how we got to go with them, and then we fight them. We're missing a whole thing, like, because what we're missing is, like, they want the girl because she's a caller, and callers call monsters. And this plot is already too complicated for me to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight you all. Well, I'm going to fight these weak guys first. Mm-hmm. I'm much faster than all of them. Did I get you in trouble? I'm sorry. It's for me to apologize. Well... I know you can't forgive me, but... She's like, no, don't worry about it, it's chill. (laughs) And you protected me, so, like, it's cool that you killed my mom. Rydia. Rydia? Rydia? Rydia. Call her Rydia. Join. So there are summons in this game. Yeah, because what else? That's her power. Yeah, you gotta be able to... The mist dragon is a summon? It was. That's awesome. Pretty... Way cooler than anything in Final Fantasy 1. Playing Final (laughs) Fantasy, dude! So yeah, Rydia, the caller, joins our party, and we Mm -hmm. start going around town, looking at shops, doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, this is the first of many examples of people getting over extreme trauma, like, with a handshake. Instantly. Just instantly over it. $10,000 for ether? We're not at a point where we're going to be doing this yet. For one ether, it's 10,000 gold? Money at that, when we can afford it, it won't be an issue. That's what that's saying to us. Okay. (laughs) Ether is super useful. It is. It replenishes your magic. Did you pick up a life? I did. Got one. Now look at this guy. William Tell. I'm on my way to Fabul. But a strange old man is denying a way to... Yeah, I found that guy. Yeah, he told me the same thing. (laughs) Are these chocobos? What are these guys? They're like dog people. Only the Damxian royalty can enter the cave Antleon to the east of Damxian. The Damxian. That Damxian. Welcome. We have few customers these days because of the monsters. That's reasonable. Yeah, well, it's, usually it's because of the rain. This time it's because of the monsters. The world is falling apart. It's all <laughs> your fault. There are front and rear rows in the party's battle formation. Place weak ones in the rear row. So this front row, rear row stuff was very confusing to us, especially early in the game. We should say there's a new mechanic in this game if you haven't played this one where you can arrange your party to either be standing closer to the monsters or further away from the monsters. Right. And the way that works is not really that confusing, but to us, it didn't reveal itself immediately. It was kind of like, yeah, instead of being able to put anyone in the front or back, it's like a foosball table. Where yeah, there's, exactly. there's like two sticks, <laughs> and like two people are going to be on one stick, and three people are going to be on another stick. Exactly. And those two can be moved. Right. Into, but they're, they're attached. Oh, another dancer. I want to go to the damn cyan to be a dancer. Watch me dance. <laughs> this is okay. an even... What the... F- <laughs> it's got a water element. She stuck her leg up in the air. Dude, she's... She's a genius. Or is that a tail? What no, is she? She's, she's doing, like, synchronized swimming. That's a, with herself. Yeah. What a great dance. She is a good dancer. How are we going to get these dancers to know about that I feel like it's all gonna come together and all the dancers we met at some point are all gonna show up in the same place and be like a team I mean does it come back up it kind of but no 
It right? doesn't at all, actually. There's I mean, an ad in the first town that says, like, dancers wanted, like... We're hiring, we're hiring dancers. dancers. And then there's dancers littering the world. Yeah, but you can never bring them all together or hand out the flyer to them. There is you, a separate place where there are also dancers. There's, like, a town where a dance happens, but that does not include all the dancers from the rest of the world. That has That's a separate thing. We'll get to that. Like I that, don't want to... I mean, maybe it's like the first town wants to be like that other town. Yeah. It's like, we're going to start our own dance club. Right. We need dancers. Yeah. It feels like a side quest that they abandoned. It definitely You know, feels like they way, didn't yeah. finish that piece out, but they were like, these animations for the dancers are so great. We're not, we are gotta leave we it gotta in. We gotta leave it in. The Dam Cyan Castle in the north governs this area. The crown print sings beautifully as a bard. Oh, interesting. Oh, the pr- oh, the it king must be so the pissed. Dancers. The king's like, my son just wants to sing all the time. I want him to swing a sword. My son's constantly being like, my voice is my weapon. And I'm like, no, your voice is not a weapon. Welcome to Kaipa of the Dam Cyan Desert. Get out of the way of the door. What is this guy doing? So in this town is another school building. Inside it is exactly the same as the other it's town. It's totally like, if you missed the school in the first town, it's here Here's also. Here's another one, yeah. Is this the same I think school? it might be all the same shit. They're all teaching for the test. Underground waterway is northeast of Kaipo, but eight big sea snakes are blocking the way. We can kill those. Anna fell in love with a man, but Tella didn't allow her to see him, so she ran away. Yeah, we've heard. Not a lot going on in this town. Someone ran away, there's a dancer. There's a dancer. I I have a feeling there's going to be a dancer in every town. (laughs) Are you already upset with the random encounters and shit? No. I mean, a little. It'd be better if it weren't happening, but that's how we're going to feel forever, so. (laughs) I mean, if you're going to feel that way, we should. I mean, what a podcast decided to do. Dude. Hey, I like these games in spite of the things that are annoying. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, like, if you really hate random encounters, we've got 15 more games of them. I know. Okay, not 15, but close. I'm going to level her at least one more time, and then we'll try to go north. You're just going to walk around in the woods, the proverbial woods? Just walk in the woods. Walking around in the sand of the game. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're gonna go back and he's gonna be like, whoa, you have magic? Okay, you can go in. Oh, the dude? <laughs> yeah. I'm alright with doing a little bit of early level leveling. Yeah, me too. So, I'm gonna go buy 99 cures. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting the game right. Lessons have been learned. The wrong lessons from the last game have been learned, which is like, buy 99 heals instead of don't do this with your life. So, I'm gonna save and then just try to go to the cave. That sounds like a plan to me. So yeah, now we go back to the old man and he tells us, no, go back to town still. I know, we took his advice, we went back to town, Right. we saw the cutscene where the Red Wings came, Yep. Rydia joined our party, and now we're like, well, that must be why we were supposed to go back to Kaipo. I, yeah, I don't... But he still won't let us through. He still won't let us through. What the fuck, man? How do we... Do we need... Are we just not... Is there an item, item to, that we can use, like... Can we play a loot in front of him? I wonder if he's literally like, you guys are not badass enough yet to walk through here. He might just be like... Well, why doesn't he then say, like, you gotta be level 18? Does he maybe want us to, like, buy weapons? We already bought... Like, there's not even weapons that our dude can use. Armor? It's not it. We have it all equipped. Okay, so we'll go back to Kaipo. Maybe there's someone we didn't talk to? I don't think there's, like, a trick that we're not getting. I think... You really think it's just we have to level? So we go back to Kaipo again and find in the corner of the town is a building we hadn't walked into. Kane told us at the beginning, (laughs) use the directional pad to walk around (laughs) and the A button to talk to everybody. (laughs) Gotta check every room, bro. I don't think I have. A girl from Baron was kept from falling down. So this is what I'm going to call mystery number one. <laughs> what we find in here is that Rosa, our girlfriend from from back home, right. is like passed out in here. Right. And all the woman says is a girl from Baron was kept from falling down. How did she get here? Yeah, where, what? Uh, how, like, she, she is here, and she's, like, sick? I don't know how she got here or why she's sick. Yeah, wasn't she just in town but before? Like, this she is... was in Baron earlier when we first met yeah, her. Yeah, she, she was in Baron. She came in our room, and she was like, I love you, and we were like, I can't even love myself. Right. Here we go. Rosa! 
<laughs> we didn't hit the story room. Because we don't have a white mage in our party, dude. Right, we need... Yeah, that's why we're not badass enough. Don't, don't leave, leave me, Cecil. Cecil. I won't. I'm right here. Okay, so, wizard, what's going on? We, we need, need sand, sand ruby. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> to cure the fever? How does that but make sense? But it is sense? in the lair of the monster called Antlion. Antlion. Okay, let's find Antlion. Well, we know what we're doing. Do you think it's going to be an ant lion? Like Somewhere in the desert. It's either a lion the size of an ant. No, it's going to be a bug. Or it's an ant the size of a lion. No, it's an ant lion. I bet it's a lion the size of an ant. Can you imagine that? Like a little fully grown lion that's the size of an ant? It's an ant lion. The bug. The, the ant lion. What? They live in sand. This they is a eat, real eat, this thing? This is a real thing. Ant lions are real? I kept one as a pet for a while. What? They, they, so they build these, like, it's like the, it's like a sarlacc. Oh, shit. Yeah. They They're have, like, like, a sand pit. Yeah. And ants fall in it, and they grab them, and they eat them. Holy shit. I did not know that. They look like dragonflies? The ant lions are like the larva. Well, the ant lion life cycle includes, yeah, it seems like there's, like, this weird little terrifying looking bug. I kept the terrifying looking bug as a pet. And then I think they cocoon and become like big dragonfly looking motherfuckers. I wonder which version, what the sprite will look like. I bet it'll be like Whoop. claws sticking out of the sand. Okay. Wow, the antlion death trap on National Geographic. They all fall They're in cool. and they They're just like are cool. st- yeah. Whoa! Yeah, they like suck the juices out of the ant with their pincers and then they throw the corpses at other ants That's to fucking get them crazy. to fall into their trap. That's insane. Parents, take note. It's a wonderful pet for a child. <laughs> you put it in a little cat food tin with some sand. <laughs> feed it live ants. I'm going to look around the desert. There I were eight snakes in the desert. Yeah. yeah. You're enjoying these battles? Yeah. They're not so bad, because they're, they're quick, you can already do area of effect stuff, magic is working, when you attack, it hits. Mm-hmm. Antlion might be hidden in a pixel somewhere. <laughs> Wasn't it the cave of Antlion? They said the lair. Yeah, that's probably, like, middle of the desert isn't the lair. But he's like a sarlacc monster, is what I'm saying. No, I get it. I, I just, there should be an well, indication. Go back to Cause also we need sand ruby. It's got to be in the sand, you know. If you live in the sand, then the sand is your layer. Like you don't need a, another covering. You're not wrong. I, the, but in this case, I am wrong. R- well, that's the thing. Is like <laughs> I feel like video game layer indicates like it's a ton- it's a dungeon of some kind. And right, what you mean is like a pit. I'm having like nom flashbacks to the oasis in Final Fantasy One, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. we gotta walk in every square in this desert because I'm telling you, there's a hidden place. I know, and I'm like, there's no way this game works like that. It's a better game. <laughs> it could be a random encounter that we just need to find. A that would blow my mind. I am yeah. guessing hidden in a pixel. This is my. That's your this prediction. Is my prediction. It's like comb the fucking desert. That doesn't... I think you should go back to the guy and see if he... All right. you're high enough level. Sure. But where, once we get Sand Ruby from the desert, we'll have a white mage and a black mage and a fighter. Let me know when you want me to look in the instruction manual, dude. Soon. Soon. <laughs> After this guy turns us away. Yeah, when he turns us away. <laughs> feels like the right time. So yeah, what he really wanted was us to go talk to Rosa and find out that we needed Sand Ruby. But he didn't need us to be any better. We saw Rosa's cutscene, and this guy is now singing a different tune. You wield the dark sword? Help me, I beg you. We had the dark sword already! (laughs) That he easily could have sung when we first walked in, because he sees us and he's like... Oh shit, you guys look like badasses. I you need got your help. The dark sword? Whereas before he was like, nah, don't come this way, weaklings. Yeah. <laughs> but like now. Nothing has changed. Now he's begging us for help. All that happened was we now know that we need Sand Ruby. Yeah, we, and this guy suddenly wants our help. He's begging us. But why do we really need Sand Ruby? I mean, Rosa, where were you last night? What were you doing? <laughs> you always go out. You never tell me where you've been. And now you need a shot? Like an inoculation or something? I, it, <laughs> the, there's, yeah. Like I said, mystery number one. Oh, he's the guy who the wicked bard tricked his daughter into running. Oh, you know who I bet tricked his daughter? The prince. 
who sings like an angel. Oh, shit. Yeah. I bet he doesn't realize it, but his baby ran away with a royal prince. Oh, boy. Who's masquerading as something's going on. Something. <laughs> You're on to something. I guess we just had to talk to that... The guy. To the guy and learn yeah. that we need the sand I sense before. evil in that direction of damn Cyan. You must be the sage Tella. I'm going to damn Cyan to get my daughter, who eloped. Uh-huh. But a huge monster is blocking the way. My magic is not strong enough to defeat it. Your dark sword might help. And this girl is a caller. Oh, fuck. She's quite gifted, I sense. We are also on our way to damn Cyan. It's worth noting, again, the state of the dialogue in the game. The translations of these games famously remain shaky at best. <laughs> Even to this day. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, let's not push all of the blame onto that. We're not really giving it our all. In yeah. The dramatic no, reading the of dramatic this masterpiece. Could take a little bit of the heat on that. Good. Let us work together to go to Damp Cyan. Okay, so Sage Tella joined. That's awesome. We got like an old man on our team? Mm hmm. I'm going to try something. Uh oh. Ryan opens the menu to see if he can change which part of our party is forward and which part is back. But it's like the three people who are in our party right now are all on the same foosball stick, all moving in unison. Right, and it's not clear that you can switch them to another foosball stick. Yeah, it's... We, we, don't, we don't understand that yet. <laughs> we keep moving them forward and backward like, what is this doing? You're not going to play an effective game of foosball with just one <laughs> stick, Jeff. No, you're not. God, what why? the fuck? Well, how do I do it? I don't know. I don't know. Why is it like that? Can you... So form allows you to reorder them. Yeah. But change is changing from front to back. And what's front and what's back? Is this back? Is this front? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This has got to be back, right? Because it's got to be bat. Like, if you're battling, I... this is closer, this is further away. Yeah, but also that's closer to the words. I know, I know, but th I think you're probably right. They're all in the back row now. I don't know. Well, you're already at level 15. Something that's bothered me in games for a long time is why can everyone only wear one ring? Why? There are five fingers on each hand. Yeah. Put ten rings on, and you're fucking invincible. I mean, I can understand not wearing all ten because you're gonna be like, I lose some dexterity, you know? But you can wear a few rings. Yeah, but think about if you were to give all those rings to, like, a black belt that basically is just using his fists. It's like he brass knuckles. break his hands. He'd break their faces. No, because his fingers would be, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he got stuck Yeah, like, brass him. knuckles is, like, specifically designed for that. Rings are kind of their own Yeah, because they've got, like, some padding in your hand. Right, you know? right, the yeah. ring is, like... I don't know, it seems dangerous. Yeah. You're but it also, if it's got like a diamond on it, you can cut people. You could make dangerous rings. Yeah. Oh, was... look, this circle with a save in it appears to be a save circle. Or a sleep circle or something. A special Let's... field here will protect us from monsters. We can use our tent, our cabin, and even save. Let's rest now and be prepared for the coming battle in my tent. Okay. The battle in his tent. Uh oh. I'm ready for a battle in his tent. Fast asleep. She must have been very tired. Well, after a battle in your tent, who wouldn't be? <laughs> so at the campfire, Rydia falls asleep, and Master Tella and us are talking all about her we have, while she's asleep right next to us. But it's like totally like a quiet bonding moment at the campfire, where right. it's, like, it's like, oh, she seems like she's good at math. I mean, this is not a real conversation two no. people would have. but <laughs> <laughs> She will be able to wield... The magic, other than calling monsters, she already does. How sweet. Just like Anna's childhood. And it looks like you drove your daughter away. Yeah, because you couldn't accept her life choices. What is the monster of this cavern? You know, every cavern has a monster. What is the one of this one? <laughs> it's a horrifying monster with eight huge tentacles. <laughs> we must defeat it first to save Anna and your friend. I was gonna say, I thought, like, with the eight snake thing, I was like, you're telling me that's not like an eight-headed... Like, are you thinking of a hydra? Because <laughs> those have nine, I think, right? Nine I don't know. So in the middle of all this, we decide to order some food. I mean, should we just get some real Final Fantasy fuel? The Panda Express? Yep. 
Mm. Or we could get from a better Chinese food place. I could do that probably. I ate at Panda Express at the mall not long ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. And felt pretty disgusted afterwards. I was like, this was bad. You don't need the two entree plate. You just need the one. I know that you want more than one entree when you get Chinese food, because that's what we all want. But you don't need two entrees and a big thing of chow mein. Especially if you're eating it there. I mean, it's all about those and leftovers. you don't need to eat it at the mall, looking out at all of the young people who are going to the mall and they still haven't made these choices. <laughs> You don't need to be a 30-year-old man eating two entrees of Panda Express at the mall on a weekday in the middle of the day because you wanted to go to the video game store. You don't need to be 30 years old and then looking over and making eye contact with the other 30-year-old who's also there on a weekday. And then, of course, when you're both done, you see that he's also going to the video game store. You don't need to do this. Caves themselves are concave, right? What do you mean? Like, they're, like, versus convex. <laughs> I guess if you're looking at, like, a wall and the cave entrance is concave. Right. But, like, when you're in a cave... I'm trying to get to... If you fill a cave full of con men, or, or convicts, is it a concave? Yes, I suppose it would be, but you're getting there by saying it already was a con, wasn't it? Always <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, game? I don't. I don't. It's a little tortured. Who are these little kids? They're Tiny stealing mage. Stealing our magic. Oh fuck. Tiny mage. That's funny. It's kind of cute. They are cute, but it's, it's come on. <laughs> it's not. It's not okay. <laughs> fuck. Oh my god, no. Why are you doing this, tiny mage? <laughs> they're stealing your magic. You stop! And then they're using it on you. T -t Toad. Yeah, totem. Totem pole. Fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He only stole one. I know. These guys are bad news. As long as you Out of MP! <laughs> he had been held. God. Yeah. No. <laughs> so look at this insane! <laughs> this is a tragedy! <laughs> like... <laughs> she cannot hit him. All they can do is magic, and they're like out of magic now because of this one fight. These fucking tiny mages. No. No! <laughs> Fucking god damn it! <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna get to the boss after this and just be fucked? I love how much you hate tiny mages. It's so delightful to me to listen to you hate them. Look, the, the tiny mage <laughs> is like a candy corn with arms and legs. <laughs> yep. And all that it does is cast hold and steal on your, your fighter MP. Yeah, so yeah. that he can't fight and then steal MP. So it's basically a fight that goes nowhere forever. <laughs> like it's it just it just like stalls. There's nothing you can do about he's it. He's in charge he's of this in, fight. He's in control. Well, I hope we don't find any tiny mages ever again. <laughs> Cuz that sucks. How tiny do you think they're really supposed to be? Do you think they're like really tiny? Like 2 inches tall? Or do you think that they're just, like, kids? I think they're little. Like, little people? They looked like they didn't even have a body. Like, there was a head with tiny little hands. Little hands? Legs. Yeah. Like, tiny. I guess when you have a body like that, like, you need to use magic. You call them little people, not tiny people. Right. Tiny is, like... Yeah, it's not little mage. In this cave, we wind up running into a lot of cave toads. So that's that's what's on our minds. Doesn't in X Men Storm have some terrible one liner before she electrocutes toads? Where she's like, Oh yeah, toads don't like to get lightning. <laughs> yeah, it's something really like. Let me look that up. You know what's the opposite of the toad element? <laughs> the lightning. You know? Oh, I remember what it is. I remember what it yeah, is. Yeah, what is it? You know what happens when a toad gets struck by lightning? What? The same thing that happens. Oh, that's... 
and then, <laughs> the she, same let, thing. And then she lightnings him. It, they get killed. They get yeah, hurt they by get the light. lightning. What happens? They get hurt by the lightning. They get hurt by lightning. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa. Ah! That's the frustrated yelp of running into more tiny mages. More tiny mages. Wait a minute. It's supposed to be the joke. Do you know what happens when a toad gets struck by lightning? It croaks. Okay. And this was a joke on the joke. What? I don't... Wait a minute. You say it's supposed to be the joke. What happens when a toad gets struck by lightning? It croaks. As though that's a... There's a world where that's a joke that's like everybody knows this joke. The article indicated that people know that joke. So that joke is like, you could be like, what happens to a toad? When it gets stomped what by a foot. What happens to a, to a toad it just croaks. ever? It croaks. A toad, toad's croak. Any toad death. Oh, okay. It di- it's when toad they death. Die, right. They croak. What happens to a toad when it dies must be it. Not what when it gets struck by light. toad when you wrap piano wire around it. <laughs> yeah, pull exactly. it tight. Pull it until tight. it stops kicking. <clears throat> what happens? It croaks. Yeah. What happens when you tie a toad to a chair and stick pins into every part of it for days without feeding it food or water? It croaks. It croaks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've way improved on this joke. What happens when you pop open the toad's mouth and stick your finger in the back of its throat and tickle its insides while at the same time tying firecrackers around it and attaching it to a rocket it and ribbits. launching it into space? It rivets. <laughs> and then it says, there's a 95% chance your dad is telling this joke right now. Is there a world where that joke is known? Like, that's a joke you tell that people have heard before? I think so. Ugh. These tiny mages again. Nicolas Cage is facing off with that guy in the te- in the, the watchtower, and he's like, Do you like Elton John? Well, the reason I ask, because he has a song called Rocket Man. <laughs> <laughs> and you're him. You're the Rocket Man. And then he shoots a rocket at him. That's amazing. And that's like such a clunky, like he has the to long walk, one yeah, liner, like the, the number of steps, and <laughs> it's classic because of it. I feel like the lightning thing is similarly like, what are you talking about? It's like when I was a kid and there was like a bullfrog in my backyard, a big toad, and my parents like you got to get rid of it, and I hunted it for weeks and I couldn't find it. And it would play tricks on me, and I finally hunted it down, right? Uh-huh. I have a trap where I trap it near a rocket. So I say to the toad, uh-huh. I say to the toad, uh-huh. Haley, shush. <laughs> I, I say to the toad, do you like Elton John? Uh-huh. And the toad. And then I said, "Well, you're the Rocket Man," and he croaked right as I hit the. <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm not quite there. I'm not quite. Yeah, there. wait. Hoping... Yeah, it's like there's so many words. This is an extremely frustrating fight. This is just insane. <laughs> like, I think if I cast magic on no, no. What are you doing? What do you think? Okay. And he misses them a lot because they're so tiny. All right. No <laughs> kids. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Again? What? Again? Can you run away or? Oh, that's a good point. Yes, I can. <laughs> Thank you. Remember that. Thank you. I was like, I'm gonna fight these assholes again. <laughs> you were ready to rage. Okay, so they're teaching you some basic strategy here, I guess. Thank God. Not that I need it, cause I'm like a pro already. But... Yeah, we're like expert. We're heroes of light. Are we light warriors in this? Well, right now we're darkness knights. Right, we're dark knights. <laughs> we gotta restore the the light to our. It's cells. down here. Oh shit! So we fall down a waterfall, which takes us to another part of the dungeon where there's also monsters. You don't often see an alligator fighting alongside a water bug. No, they're usually mortal enemies. <laughs> the the water bug and the alligator, yeah. mortal enemies. It's just like in all those African folk tales, you know, <laughs> of the water bug and the alligator. Yeah, yeah. No, that old that old folk tale where the alligator says, like, water bug, I'll take you across the river on my belly. Yeah. And then halfway through it eats it, and the water bug's <laughs> like, why did you do that? And the alligator's like, fuck you, water bug, and swims away. <laughs> That's how that story goes, That's right? That's how it goes. Is that the kraken? It's the monster. He's coming! Oh boy. Oh no. 
Octomam. Oh Octomam. So he's like an octopus. He's not like an octopus. He is he is an octopus. Which I want to point out, they said eight tentacled monster and we didn't think of that. <laughs> We were yeah. trying to figure out what it was going to be. We were like, hydras have nine heads. Eight tentacles, there's nothing There's that... nothing like that. We haven't gotten any better at solving anything. So when it was saying there's eight snakes, they meant an octopus meant that had tentacles. eight tentacles. Eight legs. Octo. That's pretty clever. Like, this fight can't be this easy, right? After... Those tiny mages were so hard. Maybe they haven't made boss fights hard yet. The real boss of this cave is the tiny mage. That was... <laughs> so we defeat Octomam. We come out of the cave and we're heading towards a new castle. Castle's Dam right Cyan. up ahead. Damn Dam Cyan. Cyan is in sight. And right as we walk up to it, air bomb. Just Bombed from the sky. A fleet of stealth bombers comes by. And by stealth bombers, we mean... Like wooden pirate ships with helicopters. The airships, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got more. Fuck! Whoa! Oh my god! They just carpet bombed the entire castle city. Well, whoa! You're just walking away. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody's dead. Fuck it. Don't even look. Wow! Damn, Cyan! Holy shit! This guy's dead. You just. You're about to make it there. And, it, and they bombed they it. Blow it up. They took the crystal. How did they, they did. how did they take they just terrible bombardments. I bet years. they had someone there already who was like, I'm taking the crystal. And they were like, No, oh. you're not. And he was like, now and they were just like bombs. And yeah, like, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> they took all the treasure too. And except so for that one. one. So I'm we, taking this one. They <laughs> forgot a tent. <laughs> it's my tent now. Oh shit. That is Anna. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Anna. Anna. That could be a Beach Boys song. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Anna. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Anna. <laughs> Ooh. You're the bard. You did this to her. Ooh. I'm not a bard. I am a prince. Yeah, totally. That's a bard prince if yeah, I ever... He's a bard prince. You swindler! Please, listen. Oh, they're gonna have like a dramatic scene play out. I don't not even this is. Oh, you're not involved in this. You spoony barn. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Wait, I'm a prince. Trust me, old man. Shut, shut up. <laughs> Listen. Should we just throw all this away? And this summarize dialogue it. Dialogue. Shit. No. Sh shut your mouth. I I can't get a word in edgewise. Please stop. Oh, Anna's fine. Oh, she's not fine? She's just yelling from over there. Are you all right? Father, Edward is the Prince of Dame Siam. Hold it. He was disguised as a bard when he came to see me in Kaipo. Okay, so we're going to throw some of it away. Yeah, Tella has come upon a scene of his, his worst nightmares realized. His daughter is dying from the bombing, the bard who she ran away with is here with her in the room. But it turns out that actually he's a prince, which everybody in the world except for Tella knew yeah, already. Yeah, that was, um, we knew this that. This was like public gossip knowledge. <laughs> well, I guess I should allow you to marry the prince well, of the land. Yeah, well, she's dead now, so it's too late. Is she actually, did she just yeah, die? Yeah, dude, she's dead, man. Damn. And then they mention a guy named Golbez, which is a very important character, but they kind of throw it away. Golbez, we now realize, is like in, in charge of the Red Wings, and he's the one taking them around to blow shit up and take crystals now. Who yeah, is who, Golbez? That's the real question. That is who the is real is question Golbez? out of all of this. I heard that he's gathering crystals using Baron's Red Wings. <laughs> cry, cry. <laughs> Jesus. Stop crying. Your tears won't bring back Anna. Jeez. Wait for me, Golbez. I'm coming to avenge my daughter. He's like, get out of yeah, my way. I don't need any help. This is my own affair. Tell Tell left. left. Well, we'll probably never see him again. That'll never come back yeah. up. Tella takes off, ready to get revenge for his daughter. Yep. Edward, the bard prince, is crying over Anna. His dead His dead love. Girlfriend, wife, friend. Elopement. <laughs> Cry, baby. 
He's like, oh my god, I just need a minute to grieve. And and, and our like, response is, Edward, get yeah. with the program. Yeah, like, you don't have a minute, because we're leaving now. Uh, Anna. Well, it's time for you to quit crying, because we we need a third party member. My mom and my whole town just got killed, and I was just a kid. <laughs> You're a man. You're a grown-up. You're not the only one who's lost loved ones. Jesus. Get the fuck over it. Rydia, give him a minute. You may be right. I'm, I'm just, a, just a coward. But I don't care. I'm staying here with Anna. Well, that's a waste of your time, my friend. You just go punch I him? I think you slap yeah. like, well, snap out of it. You're not the only one who is sad, Edward. So after we, like, slap some sense into Edward, he's like, you know what? You're right. I'll go with you guys. And we're like, ah, we got a long way to walk. He's like, fuck that. We've got a hovercraft. Yeah. And he's just like, <laughs> you get the hovercraft. And then there's, like, some shallows you can go on. You get to a new area. Fuck. She needs, she's had an MP? Yeah. Shit. So now, here's the point in the story where it made sense for me to take over the controller, so now I'm in control, and the first thing I run into is your favorite enemy, the tiny mage. It's a good one to cut your teeth on, you know, because <laughs> the fighting in this game is a little bit more complicated, so you're yeah. going to have to fight, if you can fight the most annoying thing in the whole game, <laughs> this you is can how to fight start. anything in the game. Well, because there's an active battle system. It's like, it you are kind of timed with your inputs, and I'm just like, what are the buttons? Mm -hmm. Wait. Oh, fuck. What? Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm just learning. <laughs> Slow down. I like it's this so... name for a hedgehog. They're called sword rats. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. That's totally what they are. They're porcupines. But they're called sword rats. <laughs> Which is such a funny way. <laughs> So we get to this new area, and we find there's a mountain here, and uh, when you enter it, it's called Mount Hobbs West, and right at the entrance to the mountain, which is a oh, weird we thing something. to say, an entrance to a mountain? Yeah, you wouldn't normally <laughs> you think of a, mountain, enter a mountain that way, <laughs> but in these games, you definitely always think of mountains that way. Right. Whoa, should we be here? I don't think so. What is this? So as you enter this one, there's a big block of ice surrounding the real entrance. Blocked with thick ice. Blow that up with fire. Because <clears throat> what we're we gotta fight the ant lion to get the sand ruby to wake up that chick. We're, oh. So now that the bard is in our party, we want to try out and see what what he, he can do. Yeah, and he has this ability called sing. Fuck with the music. <laughs> I can already tell I'm going to want this guy out of our party as soon as possible. <laughs> you mean bards are never cool? In D&D, &D, they're super good, but that's only because you're allowed to, like, talk your way out of shit. Right. And, like, sing songs at inns and stuff. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's try more singing. Yeah. We're going to sing to ourselves. What did he do? Lullaby. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, we put myself to <laughs> yeah, sleep. Yeah, sing at the other people. Yeah, I'm gonna sing at the bad guys. I thought it would be a buff. You would think that. I'm not... Wow. Yeah. Oh, this game is a much Already better game. Way better, much right? better like, you game. You saw that and you were settling in for like, oh, I do. I am not, like, surprised by that, but I am thrilled by it. I'm surprised by how much better it feels. So we enter a town and go to the item shop. Oh, we can change oh, this number. Shit. Oh my god, we can oh buy a lot of Oh my god, dude! Oh, uh, get 30. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What you're hearing is the discovery that in this game, you can buy as many cures as you want at once. We'd already learned that you can buy 10 at a time, but now we've learned that you can have whatever your heart desires. I mean, a lot of what this first day of playing was about was us going like, oh my god, it's not like the first one. This is not Final Fantasy 1. It's so not like Final Fantasy 1. It's almost like retroactively, back in time, they listened to our podcast about playing <laughs> Final Fantasy 1 and took every one of our specific complaints and like made this game. I love that idea that like... <laughs> They couldn't see it for themselves at the yeah, time. They, like they, they, could, they needed us to understand tell them the criticisms. from the future yeah. the real issues. Nobody's of the time. made the criticisms we made before either. Yeah, nobody. Man, I feel like, like, what have I been through that I'm so? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? 
Oh yeah. That's way better. Oh yeah. <laughs> now that's a Here real we... weapon right there. Can we put the the other thing in his other hand? No, we cannot. Can we turn him into a one-man band? <laughs> just got like a awesome. drum on his back. Yeah, yeah. Horns and harmonicas attached to his front where he can get to him with his mouth. So we gear up and we head to the cave of Antlion with our new hovercraft and our new bard and arrows. I don't know. We, we get ready. We go to the dungeon. Hey, lady, maybe my brain is falling apart and there'll be nothing left inside of it but Final Fantasy. I mean... There's, I, I can't imagine what I'm forgetting that's being replaced with the knowledge that I'm gaining right now. I mean, you wouldn't know what it was, would you? I don't. I already <laughs> forgot. Uh, there's I, a, there's that's at least not how five or six childhood friends I don't need to remember. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, like, that's not how memory works. Like, that's like how it works in The Simpsons for Homer Simpson. Right, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, It'll just be that we've exposed our brains so much that it will rewire yeah. our existence, our reality. If you think about it, it's like we're using Final Fantasy as a portal to a new reality. Uh huh. We play these games and make this podcast and emerge on the other side in a reality where we made the podcast. <laughs> that's the only thing that's different about reality after that. Oh, well, who knows we've what's made the podcast about it after that? Yeah, who who could say what what butterfly effect shit is going on exactly from from us making this? Come in, come in. Can you can you hear us? Are we coming through? We're, we're from the, we're you guys from the future. Hi, message. The, we're trying. We're on your current podcast. We're getting through. I think we have warnings. We listen to us. Listen. Not all anime is great. Finish the podcast. Don't start collecting figures. Dude, Naruto is bad. You don't need collections of Cloud Stripes Buster Swords. You don't take those. Throw them away. And if they come back, throw them away again. They're one of those items that you can't, you keep throwing them away and it keeps coming back. You must stop the time of destruction. And I mean it in real life. This is the lair of the ant lion. Worry not, ant lion is tame. I will take the sand ruby. Wait, ant lion is tame? No I, way. Bullshit. Oh, oh no. Something is rotten with the earth. The earth is rotting again. Let's go, Rydia. What? <laughs> well, he doesn't look exactly like I. He expected. looks close enough that you are a hundred percent right. He is certainly not. He's he's not a dragonfly. Found the sand ruby. It can't be. Why did Antlion attack us? We see monsters increasing every day. I love the... Increasing. The monsters are increasing. Yeah, that's the best phrasing. They're increasing. Let's go cure Rosa. Oh, yes. It's so quick and easy to run from battles, dude. And just think about how much time we've saved already by having a hovercraft that doesn't have random oh. encounters. Oh. So much time. You're only grinding when you choose to grind. Yeah. Episode 1 of Season 2, this game is not Final Fantasy 1. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we're getting pretty powerful, and we run mm -hmm. into, like, three really basic imps. These imps are maniacs. They're, these guys have a death wish. I feel like they're like, we were just trying to get home, I know it's late. <laughs> Why are you killing us? We're just little imps. Yeah, you just, like, murder them while they protest, and the... The night is like, the monsters are increasing. I don't know what's going on. So we look at our item screen, and I see some things that are worrying. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it, and I see 11 Cure 1s in one slot. Further down, one Cure 1 in another slot. And further down from that, another Cure 1, and another Cure 1, and more further down. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, there's one there. Mm. <laughs> oh, delicious. Uh-huh. That's just our, the, okay, all right. And so I start sorting them individually, and I, I realize, like, oh, you can move the one cure on top of the other cure, and then it, it becomes one, like, I'm like, why is this happening? <laughs> why? Why, why do you have to do this? Why is it like this? God, what? Oh, <laughs> fuck me, dude, why? Why? 
why? pick up those ones. Yeah. Why? It's like you're moving a rag across. Like, why? <laughs> why am I doing this? And then you gotta move all the other shit up. Yeah, I know. I got, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, how far down does this go? It goes all the way down to a button that just sorts it all for you. Yeah, I scroll down to the bottom and I see a button that says sort. So every now and then you just gotta go in and hit the sort button. Yeah. Which is really satisfying to hit. Yeah. I gotta say. Oh, sword. hit sword. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I take it all back. Yeah, there's a, there's a button there's for There's a button for that. As there fucking should be. Oh, my God. This game is infinitely forgiving. Yeah. I, but I feel like we've been in a prison us. camp. Like, <laughs> yeah. what happened to us? <laughs> like, we're not... Like, what are... We're gonna be so... Maybe that's... Like, we're gonna be so light-handed with all of these games. Because we're just gonna be like... I mean, it's way it's better, better than, than the first, first one. one. <laughs> Use the sand ruby over Rosa. So we head back to Kaipo to save Rosa. Yeah, we use the sand ruby over her and ask her, like, hey, who's this Golbez guy I've been hearing about? Yeah. And not asking the right questions of, like, hey, Rosa, like, what are you doing in this strange man's house? <laughs> I didn't know you knew anyone in Kaipo. How long have you been coming around here? Yeah. Let me check your phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I worried you. By the way, Rosa, who is Golbez? <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, okay, I'm glad you're awake. But by the way, who is this guy? We were hearing about this Golbez guy. The king invited him to the Red Wings. The king is not the same as he used to be yeah, ever know. since he got on crystal meth. We know. So Rosa... She wakes up and tells us a bunch of shit that we already know, basically. I know, man. It's <laughs> it's this game's favorite thing. It repeating story beats. You meet someone beats. new, and then they tell you things you already know. Yep. They gotta go to Fabul. Air is in Fabul, and the earth is in Tororia. But you need your rest. You are sick. You need Rosa. I it. You must rest. You must we'll rest. rest. <laughs> we'll go to Fabul for you. But we must <clears throat> get over Mount Hobbs to go to Fabul. Oh, that's where I think. Trail is blocked, blocked by, by thick, thick ice. ice. God, yeah. there's no way past that. Rydia, can you use fire already? God damn it. No, I can't. So after much hemming and hawing, <laughs> as the old folks like to say. Yeah. It's decided that we need to go back to Mount Hobbs where there's ice blocking our way. Yeah, Rydia can use fire on it, but she's not feeling great about that. And then I guess I eventually Rosa, after being like, I need to rest. No, you need to come with us. No, I need to go with you. You need to rest. She's eventually like, all right, I'm going with you. Yeah, it's weird. We're telling her she can't come with us. And then it's sort of like, well, you'll be fine tomorrow. There's a lot of things where, because we're like, hey, we need to get through the ice. Rydia can't use fire, and she's like, no, I can't. And I guess we're just kind of like, we're going to go there and make her do it. Or I don't know what we decide, because like as a group... We're like, we'll figure it out when we get there. As a group, the beginning of the discussion is like, you're sick and injured, stay here. Rydia, you can't use fire. And then the conversation flips to, we're leaving tomorrow. Rydia, you're melting the ice. It's fucking, and it's so long. We just saved you guys like 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Rosa Joy. They, they could have made this. That, was, that could have happened a sure. lot more easily. Yeah. So it's the middle of the night, and our bard Edward decides, I got to play. And my heart, it sings. It needs to let it out. Yeah. Oh, he's got to go play his music at night. He's just got to play. He's got to let it out. He goes out to the lake, pulls out his harp, starts harping away. And then he's attacked by a monster. Assassins in the night? Oh, shit. Who are you? It's Anna. Anna. And while he's fighting the monster, his ghost girlfriend shows up to be like, Fight! 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 Yeah. Fight. (laughs) This is so dramatic. (laughs) Some good puppet theater. Yeah, it is some good good puppet puppet theater. theater. (laughs) Believe in yourself. So he just went out to, like, sing to his dead wife. Yeah. And then a monster attacked him. And and she showed up as a ghost and was like, fight him! We're asleep while this is all going down? Yeah, he just, like, went out in the night. I assume he couldn't sleep because he's in so much grief, you know? Right. He's like, can't yeah. sleep. 
well, had we, a bad day. And he knows that he can't talk to us about it because we don't give a fuck. Because we will slap him if he does. <laughs> if he t- even brings it up again. Right. <laughs> but what am I supposed to do now, Anna? I don't know. You could just follow this dark knight aimlessly around while he's on his revenge quest. Wait, so we have four now? We have four? Yeah. We do. It looks Eight like there's room totally for five. five. Yep. Do you hit, go in the menu now? Hit form or change? Oh. Look at, look at that. I mean, it's pretty fucking exciting. We figured out how to change which row our yeah, characters it, were in. Now that we finally have four people, we're playing with two sticks instead of just one. Yeah, we understand the foosball table a little better now. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll be in the back row, and he'll be in the front row. I mean, Mount Hobbs West. All right, here we go. Come on, you can use fire. I believe in you. No. What? I hate fire. Oh, because it killed her village. Yes, Oh, Peter. that's right. <laughs> Listen, Rydia, you shouldn't be mad at the fire. You should be mad at me. I released the fire. Yeah. I'm responsible for the death. Look, you're the only one who can melt this ice. Please. Please, please. Please, Rydia, please. Please, please. Please, Rydia, please. Kind of Rydia. Peer pressure. Rydia, please, fire. Can you use a fire, please? Fire! Thank you, Rydia. Uh-oh. Gargoyles. Oh, no. And cockatrix. <laughs> Just turning cockatrix. Cocktrick. It's not even cockatrick. It's cocktrick. Mm-hmm. I'm calling them that forever. So we get to the top of Mount Hobbs and mm-hmm. come upon a scene that's like a kung fu fighter facing off against uh, some dudes. Yep. What's that? Yeah, what is this? What the fuck? <laughs> a karate fighter of Fabul. A Kara- Karate man. A chew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck Let's up, get karate this guy man. on our team. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that he... A chew. <laughs> I hope that he, we uh, never learn his name and that his name remains Karate Man. We're Yang. Just watch His this. name is Yang. Yang. Karate Man Yang. How much you want to bet Yang is looking for his brother Yin? Interesting point. Let's help. Yeah, that's a full party right there. That's a full party. So we immediately team up with Karate Man Yang and uh, commence to fighting the mom bomb. A mom bomb. I mean, a mom bomb is just about the most terrifying thing I can think of. A whole bomb of mom? It's just a, bo- a bomb of mom, yeah. I've had a mom bomb go off on my Facebook page. <laughs> anybody? You? Anybody else? Anybody can relate to that? Oh, fuck. Ah! Whoa. Did it blow up? Or is it... Did it become a thing? Like, what? Because now it looks like it's part smoke. It's exploding! Fight oh, it! It's working on exploding. I got it. Oh. oh that hurts. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so the bomb, the mom bomb exploded into a bunch of little child bombs. That's what happened. We That's just witnessed bomb birth. Fucking, <laughs> and it was beautiful. Is that how baby bombs are made? That's how baby bombs are made. The, they explode and then the they mom become bomb smaller bombs into bombs. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's what giving birth was? <laughs> like, just the the mom just, like, swells until they explode. And they're just, like, dead and everywhere and exploded. And then babies. Just, like, <laughs> just everywhere just, all like, over the building. Just, blew up and there's just babies. All over the room. Every obstetrician room is just a fucking bloodbath with a dead it's, body it's that's just exploded. Got, and just, got just got a seven in the bottom crying of the babies. Yeah. So you just hose it down and you just collect the babies. You collect the babies. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean that they were like, was the mom bomb fully pregnant and had been inseminated by dad bomb? Do you think we're going to run into dad bomb? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's not a sexual thing. Maybe it's like eventually all bombs become mom bombs. Like they they reproduce asexually. Yeah, they grow and they just fill up with bombs like an amoeba (laughs) and they just burst. Explode into, Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, fragmentation is a method of reproduction. And as Yang joins our party, that's where we're going to end the episode for right now. I think that's a good place to stop. So that is episode two. Episode two. Uh, We're we're now well on our way. We've gotten some. (laughs) We've gotten a full party. 
We're at the top of Mount Hobbs. The monsters are increasing. They're still increasing. There's a guy named Golbez. We've killed Mom Bomb. We've killed Octo Mom. We've killed all the moms. Once again, we killed <laughs> Rydia's a mom. Lot of mom killing. A lot of mom killing in this That's game. That's the theme of the beginning of the game is mom death. Mom death. And then, uh. Mom murder by you. <laughs> Matricide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's there's four elements, each with a corresponding crystal. Yep, and we hope that you guys join us next week as the adventure continues. You can find us at no one can know about this dot com and you can find us at no cat podcast on Twitter and at gmail.com and all that. We'll see you fucks next week. Yeah. In the meantime, here's a taste of next week on No One Can Know About This. I think next time we're going to have to move up to a harder maze. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? Uh, well, I'm a little disappointed, actually. I was hoping it would be more challenging. I mean, it looks really <laughs> confusing, it do- I- but it's like you just kind of follow a path until it works. It seems to be the strategy <laughs> so far. That's literally what it's going to be to the end. That's what mazes are. Is It looks complicated, and then there's one route that you're going to find through it, and you're just going to keep drawing until you find that. I mean, I hope you're wrong, is the thing. I hope that <laughs> There's at a something certain point more? I can look at a maze and I can know how to do it. You think that's what's going to develop? Yeah. Well, we're going to find out. We are. So this was, was the first installment of Keeping Your Mind Sharp. Does your mind feel sharp? Uh, I feel a little relaxed. <laughs> Like, walking through the maze. Did you end this and go, like, I want more? I did, kind of. That was, like, pretty short, actually. Hmm. You gotta let it sink in. Exactly. That's really what I want to track, is, like, after weeks of doing mazes, right. what will be different about mazes? What this? is different about mazes, yeah. eventually? Mm-hmm. Success. Success.